Howl at Loose has just released update 14.2. It's supposed to be a new start for the game to go in this new direction that Team 17 and the rest of the development team have been talking about for a while. Now, there was actually a full podcast that was two hours over on the Fresh Baked Goods channel. I'm going to link it below if you want to go and check the whole thing, but I went through it and I've taken some of the best bits and some of the most exciting things that the developers have been talking about and what's going to be coming next for Howl at Loose. What they're fixing from the last disasters, what actually happened during those processes, and more importantly, how they're going to move on in the future and what we can be seeing coming to the game very soon. First, they talked about Expression Games, being a new studio that has been put together to specifically work on Howl Let Loose. You see, when Team 17 acquired the game from Black Matter, they had to actually get development into their own hands. They got a lot of the old Black Matter work that had been coming across and this was where the problem started. You see, a lot of the work had already been done by Black Matter and Expression Games, Team 17's new development studio, were just taking over and trying to get everything cobbled together, not just the deadline of that horrific trailer, but of course the British Forces update as well. The initial aim for the new studio was to bring more content to the game, but they soon saw, and I think the whole world saw, that that wasn't going to be their best option. So many issues that the game had from the past came into fruition with these newer updates, and instead of bringing more content, they should have just spent the time fixing without chucking in a load of new stuff, because the backlash was horrific. And I don't necessarily mean from the fans, but I mean from the game itself. The biggest example of this for me is El Alamein. This was a new map that came in with the British, and finally something I've been waiting for so long going into North Africa. But this whole map didn't quite fit with the playstyle that not only the fan base knew and loved, but the current game mechanics lent towards. It was a much bigger and more open map, which meant that they had to actually change the core of Hell Let Loose to make it work better, making running faster, adding sliding to cover and going to ground faster, fundamentally changing some of the core Hell Let Loose mechanics. This then ended up with that famous drama of people now being able to run faster than tanks, have people going super speed just because they tried to break the game to work with a new map that was being added in. A little bit of a step back, taking a look at what this new map changes and how they alter the mechanics could have gone very far for Team 17's first big release. Speaking of the British faction though, they're going to be getting a complete rework. More weapons, more armour, and a change to what we already have. There'll be a bipod for the Bren gun, which is incredibly needed since the Bren gun is a disaster to try and use at the moment. The British will be getting their version of the Thompson. There'll be a couple new British bolt action rifles as well as the Mark V Sten gun coming in as well. A lot more variation for the new faction, fleshing it out a bit more. As far as I'm aware, they're going to really be focusing on historical accuracy as there was a a lot of talk about why they only added in the Lee Enfield, since this wasn't necessarily the main gun that was being used at this time in World War II. That might sound like a lot of new weapons, but then they reveal that this will be on a per theatre basis. The ability to use different weapons in different scenarios depending on the theatre of war being chosen. Whether you're fighting in the Netherlands or you're fighting on the African front, you'll get a choice of arms and armour depending on the scenarios. And as mentioned, this is also the case with tanks. Different armour will be available on the African front than it is for the Driel map, for example. They are bringing in the Matilda 2 or perhaps the Valentine, even the Stuart tank. So a lot more arms and armour for the British faction, and they'll all be relative to what theatres of war are being played at that point in time. Uniforms are going to get a full change. British uniforms for North Africa and Western Europe are going to be reworked, so it makes a bit more sense. You're not going to have people running around in forest camo while they're in the desert, and there will be the British airborne skins and Polish airborne in Driel. This is going to represent Operation Market Garden, where the Allies landed just before D-Day to try and clear out the back ranks. Something that has been neglected for a while, though, is recon and artillery, especially artillery. It hasn't really been focused on for a long, long time and they have spoken about how they're going to try and change it to fit with the playstyle that at least the players have come to know and learn. You see, currently the meta for playing as Recon is to go and camp by the enemy artillery for the whole game, wait until they sit on it and snipe their heads off. This means that artillery becomes pretty much useless because it can wipe the whole map and really be the turning point for a team, which means that it is just the biggest target for the enemy Recon. 
because these things are put together, it means that one, the sniper squads don't get to do anything fun because they have to sit at artillery, and if they don't, the artillery will wipe out their team. Or if they do, the enemy artillery just don't get to actually play because they get spawn killed over and over again. So how is this going to be fixed? The developers spoke about making an artillery commander ability instead of having fixed artillery on the ground, which is a cool possibility. I do like having fixed artillery, but it would definitely fix this issue. Mortar teams coming in instead, something I've already spoken about in my last video, most likely going to be two person mortar teams and mobile armoured artillery. Self-propelled guns that can be driven around at least limited wise will be a lot slower, they won't have as heavy armour, but you'll be able to have or at least fill that same role that artillery did, but move around a little bit as well, making it a bit of a counter to enemy recon. And it is a bit of a shame this one for me, because I really like the position that artillery has, at least from a historical basis. Being able to coordinate arty and infantry attacks in public games, it is a really nice feature, but it never really happens very well, and the times it does, like I say, recon just go and counter it instantly. They're only really things that work well for the events that go on. Public games artillery gets kind of forgotten, so whilst I am going to miss what we had, the mechanics do need to change to make it a viable option and not just a wasted class. There will be a new type of garrison on their way though. They didn't give too much away, but it looks like there's going to be more smaller tweaks, so Adding things in, I'm assuming stuff like hidden garrisons that can only spawn a select amount of people or temporary cheaper garrisons that are a little bit like airheads but have to be placed. I mean, the main issue that they spoke about within this interview is people complaining on the lack of garrisons. If you don't have a team that are really communicating, it's kind of game over since the squad leaders don't put down the garrisons or they don't have the resources to put down the garrisons because the commander's not on their team or whatever. They need to have a solution for that. And it looks like they're going to be going with a sort of middle ground between an outpost and garrison. Something that can be placed down by a squad commander with limited or less resources, but only works for a temporary amount of time or a certain amount of people, so on and so forth. Now, that is fully just my speculation, so there is nothing confirmed, but we do know there is a new garrison on its way that is currently being tested. Speaking of roles, something that supports can do is put down supplies for garrisons, but a lot of the time people don't do that. And it's often noted that there should be more that each role can do. Medics can pick people up, supports can put down supplies, engineers can build stuff. But what about expanding that? Well, that's what they're going to be trying to do next. They've not really indicated on what can be done, but I think there could be a chance this can come in hand in hand with something like these new versions of garrisons, letting more troops and more classes take some sort of supplies as well. So there's a better ability for people to get down more garrisons and keep the game rolling. And then we move on to the fun bit. This is the tanks. Currently with the meta in the game when you're playing in these massive warfare matches, there isn't really much need for anything other than a heavy tank and the only reason you'd go or ask the commander for a heavy tank is if the resources on your team are low. So how can this be fixed? Well, tanks are going to evolve in a direction where they become specific to each scenario. They mentioned in the interview talking about a tank like the Hellcat. It has low armour but a very heavy gun. I mean, players are going to have to learn the specifics of how they are actually used, keeping them at the back and under heavy protection, but making sure that they can still take out those medium to heavy tanks on the enemy team. Maybe even making some of the light tanks a little bit faster, but I think it all just comes down to player practice. Here's the thing. Most of the tanks already in the game are useful. Light, medium and heavy tanks, even recons, all have their own uses, but players just don't know how to use them properly. Recon tanks can be used as hell on the enemy team if you've got an experienced player in them. Skirting behind enemy lines, shooting medium, light, even heavy tanks in the back if they're able to sweep around, but most players just don't bother. Either that or one guy sits in a medium or heavy tank and stops anyone else from joining their squad. I personally think solo tanks should just not be a thing at all. It feels like a weird game limitation trying to stop people from having fun in their own way, but it does ruin the entire match and it goes against the entire purpose of a game like Hell Let Loose. Having people lock tank squads with just a solo member meaning that they can take something like a tiger, sit there, get it destroyed, not really play the way it's supposed to be, and meaning the whole team can be absolutely demolished by the enemy 76. I don't like limiting players on a mechanical level, but there needs to be be some other way of meaning tanks are only used the way that they should be. Maybe that's going to come in 
with the tutorial systems that Hell Let Loose is implementing. They did mention things like smoke, being able to smoke enemy tanks and fire off smoke grenades as well, being able to open the hatch as a commander using MGs perhaps, a bit like we have in the half track. That could add a bit more variety and light tanks can actually provide some use, smoking off enemy tanks while we're able to get round the back and shoot them in their weak positions. That could be something that could be done. Then after all of that, after all the issues that Hell Let Loose has, we got on to the final bit. Talking about what could be coming next, they did briefly mention the thought of different theatres of war like Crete or Italy. And yes, I would love some Mediterranean stuff, but they did mention, which I am glad, that they are not going to be anytime soon. They're going to calm all that stuff down, make sure it's all historically accurate and everything that's in the game, such as North Africa and the British factions, are to a solid standard first. They did say on that note that more North Africa maps are coming and the British forces will be expanded as we've already covered. But this for me indicates towards something a little bit different. You see, the fact that they're even looking into the future for more theatres of war, it looks like we're going to get every theatre of war that World War 2 has to offer, maybe even potentially the Pacific later on, which seals a deal. There will probably never be a Hell Let Loose 2. That was something that was potentially rumoured when Team 17 acquired Black Matter, or the game in general, that they could be working on a sequel. It seems like they're now going to be focusing entirely on this one game to cover every aspect of World War II, which I definitely think is a positive. And then, as mentioned in the last video, the possibility of looking at Unreal Engine 5. A few extra tidbits, our flak guns have a potential of being worked on at the moment, also a prototype for a flamethrower tank is in the background, talking about a Churchill Crocodile tank, of course, another flamethrower tank. That's all exciting stuff. But for now, it does look like Team 17 are going in the right direction, and once again, I will be following the entire progress. 14.2 has come out. It has changed the locomotion within the game. You can't now run faster than a tank, so you might at least be happy to hear that.